ball joints are a suspension component that's relatively simple in design, yet they play a huge role in the steering and suspension systems. Ball joints are what attach the steering knuckle to the vehicle's control arms, providing the pivot point for the wheels and suspension. The proper service, maintenance, and if necessary, replacement of these ball joints is critical to maintaining the integrity of the entire steering and suspension system. And that's what we're going to cover in today's Tech Tip. The automotive ball joint, also known as a ball and socket joint, resembles the human joint at the hip, both in design and function. The human version allows movement of the leg in all directions. In a similar way, the vehicle's ball joint allows for unhindered movement of the suspension and steering system components. Vehicles may be equipped with both a lower and upper ball joint, or just a lower, depending on the suspension design. And because of the extra work that the lower ball joint has to perform is typically larger than the upper. Most original factory ball joints are usually sealed joints and require very little maintenance. Some though are equipped with grease fittings and require periodic lubrication. Something you should perform whenever the vehicle is in for routine service. Failure to keep up with the lubrication needs of the ball joint will certainly result in premature wear and tear and could result in catastrophic failure. In either case, ball joints will eventually wear out. And because they are such a critical part of the steering and suspension systems, it's important that you inspect them and the rest of the steering and suspension system whenever your customer is in for any type of routine maintenance. The first step is a quick visual inspection, particularly the rubber boot that seals the joint from contamination. If it's torn or grease loss is evident, the joint requires replacement. With the vehicle in the air and the weight off of the tires, grab the wheel at 12 and 6 o'clock and alternately push in and out on the tire. This is a test for lateral movement in the joint and any play you can feel is too much. You can follow this up by checking the lateral play with a dial indicator. The specification for the Ford we're working on on the lower ball joint is zero to 40 thousandths of an inch. The upper ball joint is even less with a max specification of 24 thousandths of an inch. Some serviceable ball joints utilize the grease fitting to indicate wear. As long as the fitting remains visible above the housing, the ball joint is working well. But if it disappears from view or levels with the housing, it's time to replace the affected ball joint. Have you ever seen a ball joint fail catastrophically? Well, if you have, you'll understand why I say it's a good idea to recommend replacement of all the ball joints if you're replacing one that's worn out. These are, after all, safety components, and they literally hold the suspension and steering system together, much like the hip joint holds your leg to your body. That's why it's so important to select a quality replacement, a part that is made with resilient stress-tested materials, like those in the Duralast chassis line. Made with heavy gauge micro alloy steel and resilient components, all Duralast chassis parts are put through rigorous testing to ensure they meet or exceed OE performance standards. Duralast also engineers unique innovations to correct common OE component problems. And with 98% vehicle coverage, there's a Duralast option for nearly every customer. For your truck, SUV, and fleet customers who demand more, there's the Duralast Gold chassis line. The gold line improves on the original OE design and offers greater durability and better than OE performance, perfect for the added demands of vehicles used for towing, hauling, or off-roading. 
Duralast gold ball joints, for example, feature a larger ball and induction hardened stud with a unique integrated bearing design, allowing for greater movement while reducing the number of components within the ball joint itself. This design also maximizes contact area to evenly distribute loads, eliminate failure points, and ensure a long service life. All of the Duralast chassis parts come with a fully sealed heavy duty dust boot to prevent contaminants from entering the joint assembly. As you may know, some vehicle models may require special installation steps and select Duralast Gold chassis parts will include an orange tag in the parts box that shares these installation steps and tips. Many also include a QR code that links over to these installation tips in a video format. Now my old F-350 is primarily used for towing and often on some pretty unfriendly roads. So I think I'm going to elect the gold option for my application. What do you say we get to it? The first step is to raise the vehicle so we can remove the wheel and tire assembly and gain access to the ball joints. Be sure that you use the proper lifting points for the vehicle that you're servicing, whether you're putting it on a lift or using jack stands. Never rely on a hydraulic jack to support the vehicle. On the F-350, replacing the ball joints requires removal of the steering knuckle from the vehicle. Be sure to follow the OE service procedures for the vehicle that you're working on. Use the proper tool to remove the tie rod from the knuckle. When suspending the brake caliper, never let it hang by the hose. Always use a wire coat hanger or something similar to support the caliper's weight and hang it out of the way. Next, I'll remove the brake pads and the caliper mount. Next, we'll remove the disc brake rotor. Then the brake dust shield and the ABS wheel speed sensor. With the knuckle stripped bare, remove the upper pinch bolt and then the camber adjuster, noting how the adjuster is oriented. Mark it if need be, so that you can put it back in the same way you took it out. Remove the cotter pin from the castellated nut. Loosen, but do not remove the lower ball joint nut. Break the lower ball joint loose using the correct tool and then remove the nut and remove the knuckle. With the steering knuckle secured in a vise, replacing the ball joints is relatively straightforward. If equipped, remove the grease fitting from the base of the ball joint. If equipped, remove the circlip. The job is made a lot easier when I take advantage of this special tool to remove and reinstall the ball joints. Luckily for me, my local AutoZone store has this available as a loaner, so I don't have to go out and buy my own. Using the special tool, press the lower ball joint out of the knuckle, followed by the top joint. Using the special tool, press the new ball joints in place, starting with the top. Keep the tool square and avoid using excessive force. If it feels like it's taking too much of an effort to move the joint, something isn't right. With the new ball joints installed in the steering knuckle, it's time to put it all back together. That's essentially the reverse order of our disassembly but I do want to make sure that you pay attention to a few things as you put everything back where it came from. Number one, to make sure that you tighten all their fasteners to their proper torque specification. Never use an impact gun to tighten ball joint, tie rod nuts, and other suspension components. And also, if it came with grease fittings for the new ball joints, make sure that you grease them as part of your reassembly process. 
With everything back together, it's time to put it on the alignment rack and verify that all the alignment angles are within specification. Pay special attention to the thrust line. This is an important angle, especially if the vehicle is equipped with an ADOS system. And if the vehicle does have a related ADOS system, be sure that you check to see if there are any calibrations required before you return the vehicle to your customer. Finally, make sure that you take the vehicle for a test drive and that you confirm that the customer's original concerns have been corrected and that the steering and suspension systems are working the way they should. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to find out more about the Duralast OE quality chassis line or the specialty enhanced gold line, visit duralastparts.com forward slash chassis.